Well, thanks. Okay, so there's 4 million chronically lonely people in the UK alone, 30 million suffering in some way. It's one of the major challenges facing society. So I'm going to talk to you about how I lost my home and my sense of what home is and became a champion of welcoming spaces and founder of the Peer Space. So in 2006, I went on an expat adventure to New Europe as part of the founding team of a startup. And this three-year adventure turned from what was really a heaven for a few years into a kind of a hell. It was a real roller coaster over a subsequent three years. And after three difficult years, I made the difficult decision to return to the UK. And this proved to be a really no easy feat at all. It was very disorientating, very frustrating. Sometimes it made me quite angry and people around me were angry with me for not being able to navigate this really challenging time in my life. And I became this kind of wild wanderer, kind of roaming the back streets and cities of our of our nation, trying to figure out how to break back into what felt like me, felt to me like Fortress Britain. But it all changed when I got invited one day into a very welcoming dinner space called Good Vibrations in Bristol. A gathering of largely sort of midlife consultants, entrepreneurs, business people, a very welcoming space. And I had this feeling as I walked in the door, like, thank goodness I found you. And the organizer, Ryan, had this kind of Cheshire cat grin on his face as if to say, it's all right, we're all mad here. And I attended these dinners for the next four or five years, and it practically was the best night of every month. Though sadly, I never did get to bring my family back over to the to the UK. It was nevertheless a really excellent demonstration and participation in a very welcoming space. And several years later, I experienced another very special, similar kind of space, an old village welcoming ceremony on a retreat. The idea was, We'd, um, in the old times, people would, uh, if people left the village, however, however far away they went, however long they were away, it didn't matter. On the return, a really big deal was made of that moment, a celebration of the fact that they'd, they'd, they'd come back to, effectively, to their home. A celebration of that person, if you like, a moment to recognize that perhaps they'd been missed. If you think about the idea of a return to a place you once knew or a arrival to an unfamiliar place, you could think of this in modern times in many different ways, like perhaps a return from parental leave or from long-term unemployment, or perhaps from sickness or from being abroad like me. The return is really hard, right? It's hard for the people in the community because they have their busy lives, their day-to-day -day priorities, all the things they need to focus on with their family and in their in their communities, but it's even harder for the returner. Perhaps at the start, they might need simple things like just food, water, shelter. And um, in time, maybe they want to have a chance to share their story once they've once they're comfortable to share a bit about how they felt on their journey, how they feel now what they learned, what they might need now. So I really wonder, could we do, could we do welcoming better? And I really mean this in all of our communities, in our day-to-day -day lives. There are simple things that we can all do. And if you're really keen, you can work with someone like us. I'll tell you more about that now. <clears throat> um, so for me, in these difficult times, I sometimes I personally felt a little bit like a, a kind of a Hagrid character, um, wandering around as a man on my own without my family. And I got so much from these welcoming spaces like those Good Vibrations dinners in Bristol, from the village welcoming ceremony experience, and from in this in my second return to the UK in lockdown, uh, the Signal East Hampshire business community. I say my second return because in, in my story, in 2017, I went back to Bulgaria for a second time. And after a significant piece of personal development work, I um, I launched my first dinner space 
in Eastern Europe, at the opposite end of Europe. And over the two years uh, up to 2020, I, I held um, a space for the international business community in this effectively, uh, what I think of sometimes as the kind of wild east uh, city as it kind of uh, evolves out, out of these sort of uh, the changes that they've been through over 20, 30 years. And we brought together international business people around the dinner table with speakers. Um, and in parallel, I, I launched my um, amateur music music career for the first time, uh, performing music and rocking places like the British Embassy. And then when the world changed um, in 2020, a year later, I, I found my way back and uh, we incorporated Peer Space as a UK company. And over the last six years, all in all, we've we've held over 100 spaces and spotlighted more than 50 speakers, almost always around the dinner table or the virtual dinner table. And thousands of people have benefited. So now coming up to today, we, we specialize in speaker dinners, leaders lunches, uh, and I've gone full time this year into building this business. And finally, this is only my second outing with my talk. Um, thought around to do my own talk because I'd rather sing other people's songs than um, than talk about my own my own life and my own journey. So I think there really is a loneliness epidemic, and um, there's things that we can do as the peer space for for. Um, general communities we have an initiative for um running speaker dinners in in towns we have our our flagship dinner the, the uh, dugout dinners for running, running in london now but basically for major cities and we have an initiative for um pub parties called the pub life and we get very positive emotional feedback from people now that we're not even a year still back into running in-person events so can, can we imagine a, a more welcoming world i think as i said we can all do our bit and welcoming for me is all about sharing the little opportunities to do a little sharing where everyone gets seen and heard and the big sharing the idea of that of the talk and uh, sometimes it may also be about the chat a challenge to address a problem to solve and it might really help someone in a big way like that first one did for me 11 years ago thanks for your time <laughs>